Hey, what are you working on? Uh, I'm trying to find a good demo, something that Codex can modify. Hmm. We could make this little ball thing multiplayer. That sounds very cool. Let's do it. Codex CL1 tick forward, Mark. Hey everyone, Romain here. Recently, we shipped GPT-5 and GPT-5 Codex. And we've also released a ton of improvements to Codex CLI to better harness the agentic coding capabilities of these models. And today, I'm sitting with Ison, who led a lot of this effort on the CLI. Do you want to give us a quick tour? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, we have tons of really cool updates. You can install it really easily with either NPM or Brew and log in with your ChatGPT account. So here you're in your terminal, and yes. you just have to launch it with by diving codex. That's all there is to it. So we'll say, make a plan for making this game multiplayer. What's funny is like this game was one of the very many examples we shipped completely built by GPT-5 in one prompt. Yes. Right? And now we can start building up upon it. So what it's thinking, tell us a little more like about what's happening, which model you're using here. Yeah, so this is uh, gonna be GPT-5 Codex, which is our new model, and it's really good for any sort of coding task. So here, it's like currently crafting the plan. I see it's laying out the steps of what it's supposed to do. Yep. Can you expand what's happening here? Yeah, totally. So we can go into transcript mode with Control T, and that gives you things that are super useful, like the, uh, the chain of thought, the sort of the exact code that it's doing. If you don't, you're not interested in the, the whole details, you can just like let it uh, run at a very high level telling you like what it's doing. Yes, exactly. Okay, so while it's working on this like uh, kind of multiplayer feature, why don't you kind of open up a second codex to give us maybe a quick tour of some of your favorite commands? Yeah, so I'm a huge fan of the model switcher. You sometimes want to use one model for one thing, one model for another. This allows you to change the reasoning level. Right, because with the new GPT-5 Codex model, yes. the very simple task can go very fast. Yes. But for the more advanced one, now Codex can work on for like up to hours yes. at a time. Okay, so that's slash model, what else? Yeah, uh, approvals is really useful. So this is where you kind of get into the sandboxing features of Codex, which are very cool, very powerful. We have three modes, we have read only, we have auto and we have full access. Auto is the default, and that allows Codex to read files and make changes to files within the current directory. So by default, it stays in the boundaries of your project. It's not gonna affect anything else on your laptop. Exactly, and then if you wanna be in read-only, that's kind of useful for, for example, running outside of a Git repository. Yep. Or if you're like, I only care about planning, I actually don't want Codex to get distracted by trying to edit things. And then we have Codex Resume, and that allows you to pick up from any previous session. Super nice. Why don't you uh, go check back on the status of this multiplayer game? Yeah, it looks like we've got a plan, so why don't we tell Codex to do that? Great. So one of the things that I think is really interesting that people sort of miss about Codex is that it's useful for these coding tasks, but you can also deploy things with it. You can use it for SRE type things you can figure out like, oh, we're seeing these, you know, this bug show up for our users. Why is this showing up? Go look at the logs, um, take these disparate data sources, combine them. Um, it's surprisingly very, very, very good at that sort of thing. How are we doing on the game? Yeah, I think the game is probably good to go. So it sounds like the, the moment of truth is to play the game, but maybe before we need to deploy it. Yeah, so what I'm gonna say for this app, let's maybe uh, deploy it on Versal. Yep. And let's use codex dash dash search in order to tell it to, hey, look up the latest Versal docs. Yeah, or in case like you wanna deploy something very specific and you need persistence, or maybe you wanna look up the latest changes of like uh, an API. Yeah, exactly. We should go to approval, we should switch it to full access, and then we'll tell it, use the Vercel command line tool to deploy this app. Cool, sounds like it's deployed. Yeah, let's do it. Should we try it? Yeah, let's give it a so shot. So I guess I can take over this laptop if you want to sure. bring yours. I'm gonna have to ping you the link. Yep. There you go, you should have it. Ready to start. Let's go. Oh my God, this is awesome. <laughs> we are really in sync. Yeah, super in sync. Incredible. Yeah, this is all real time. Who's gonna be the best at this? I don't know. You seem pretty good. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> to wrap us up, what have we seen? So we saw Codex CLI logged into your ChatGPT subscription, mm -hmm. starting to like change a game, yep. make a plan to implement like a full multiplayer game. Yep. 
we saw a quick tour of the commands, but more interestingly, you use web search to kind of like fetch information from the internet, you change approval modes, we deployed this game, and we're now able to, to play it. Yeah, and it's super easy. This is the exact same flow that I use to you know, do pretty serious stuff just across like a wide variety of languages, a wide variety of frameworks, a wide variety of projects. Amazing. Well, as you can tell, we're shipping a ton of improvements across all codec surfaces, so you can have this AI teammate at your disposal wherever you work, and in this case, right in the terminal. And we can't wait to see what you build with Codex CLI. See you next time.